Uh, Mrs. Brown, she's currently a phenomena. We have books, we have a stage show, an award-winning TV show. We also uh, we're in the Little Museum of Dublin here where there's an exhibition on yes. the moment and big budget blockbuster movie about to open in cinemas. Uh, and I wanted to go back just to the early days. Where it all started on a, a radio show, Gar Callan's radio show. And I was wondering if someone wants to go back to you then and tell you about the museum, about the big budget movie, what would you have said? What, what would you have thought back then? You're talking to your ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, 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 first of all, I made this up as I was going along uh, for the radio series. Um, even, even getting it away with Garrett, when he said he was looking for something original, you know, something different, on the spot, I made up the idea of Mrs. Brown because I'd, I'd heard on the way in Louise Brown. It was the anniversary of Louise Brown's birth. It was the first test tube baby, and that's where I got the name from. Um, so. Uh, it's always been made up as I was going along. I would have had no idea of the success of this. And every single bit of it, as it came along, the books came along because I decided to, as an exercise in writing, to write a backstory of Mrs. Brown. And that's where the book came from. The very first play came along because I was broke. I had just made uh, a movie, lost every penny I had. And Dennis Desmond, God bless him, said to me, why don't you put something on the stage? Uh, I said, I, I don't really feel funny. I don't, I don't think I can write funny. And he said, see Mrs. Brown, that radio character, scribble up something about her. And I wrote The Last Wedding, and it ran for 16 weeks in the Gaiety Theatre and broke all the box office records. So it was, she's been a lifesaver since. And I'm now literally just reacting to, what, to what's happening. I'm not planning it. I'm just reacting to the way it's gone. Yeah. We have the movie opening in cinemas later this month, and uh, part of the charm of the TV show has been, uh, you know, Mrs. Brown inside her four walls, uh, on stage and in TV, and I was wondering, was it uh, a challenge for you to uh, keep Mrs. Brown's charm while putting her onto a bigger canvas? Yeah, but we're well, outside. Yeah, that, uh, we didn't we didn't uh, break the canvas up that that big. The, t the tradition with TV series that become movies is to take them somewhere else, go on holiday to Marbella sure, or sure. Australia or whatever. So we didn't want to do the Browns go to. No, we wanted to just tell a, a, a real story. So rather than 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 take her somewhere else, what we did was we really expanded the canvas. Yeah. So although the all the, the the TV viewers would be aware that Mrs. Brown is a Moor Street dealer, but they never saw Moor Street. Sure. So now we get to put her into Moor Street and let them see her being a Moor Street dealer. So instead of bringing her on holidays, we just brought her outside. Yeah, yeah. we wanted it. The truth of it is, that Dublin's been very good to me. Uh, Mrs. Brown's been very good to me. Moor Street's been very good to me. And I wanted to get, take the opportunity, while we had it, of writing a love letter to, to Dublin, to make Dublin look really what I believe it is, uh, and certainly what it used to be, uh, and to show Moor Street as that multicultural street. And even as a kid that I remember, it didn't matter who you were, where you came from, you were always going to welcome in Moor Street. Yes. Uh, and, and I wanted to show that, so uh, that's what, that was the plan, and I think we got it. Uh, one of the other charms of the TV show is uh, when you break the fourth wall, which on the light it managed to stay into the movie. And I was wondering, was um, that something you talked about when planning a movie? And another one of the charms of the show is that it's filmed in front of a, a live studio audience, which it's, it's impossible to have in a film. So I was wondering, was it difficult when you don't have an audience to bounce off when you're doing Mrs. Brown? But to take the first part of your, your, your question first, um, the, the, ch the whole charm of, of it being uh, the, the impromptu pieces. The whole charm of them is not to tell the director. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, so so w w whenever I did them, I, I didn't tell them. As for the second part, um, which was what? Uh, it was uh, the live studio audience. Oh, yeah. Believe it or not, we did end up with a live audience. When yeah. we were... When we were we in Moor Street. We may as well sure, have had sure. a live yeah. audience. It we was great. It was 2,000 people there at times um, watching the show. And as soon as... Uh, you know how s movie savvy the, the the Dublin public have become. As soon as the director said rolling, everybody went quiet. Right. We soon filmed the scene, and when he said cut, they all applauded. And uh, so we did get a little bit of that. We did get a little bit of a live audience. But you you change the rhythm only slightly because at the end of the day, the rhythm of the show is left to the editor, and that's who you've got to trust. I've got one question left, or one minute left. So my brother has a question that he asked me to ask. He's a big fan. He's got your uh, Wibbly Wobbly Wonder DVD. He's got the Raspberry Ripple. And he wants to know, uh, you know, do you miss doing regular stand-up with Brendan O'Carroll? And is it something you'd, you'd ever consider returning mm. to? I've never stopped. You've never stopped? I take at least four weeks every year, and I do stand-up somewhere. I don't tell anybody where I'm doing it. Okay. But I always do four weeks stand-up somewhere. Okay. Uh, the whole beauty of stand-up is so different, and it's so... It's self-indulgent, it really is, because you're up there on your own, there's nowhere to hide, and you get, just get to talk one-to-one -to, -one to the audience. Yeah. That I, I never stop. And I will be planning in the coming years uh, a stand-up tour, probably by Mrs. Brown.
which would be completely different. Brilliant. Mm. In the movie, you do play uh, another character in the film. Yes. And is that what, would you have a repertoire of other characters that maybe you'd like to discover or develop in the future? Mr. Wang was a complete accident because actually the person who we had to play that part was Cato from the, the Pink Panther films. Okay, well. Uh, he was originally going to play the part, but yeah. actually he became too ill to, to, to travel. So we ended up with no Mr. Wang, and it was suggested by my son, Danny, who plays Buster, that I play Mr. Wang. Because he'd been reading in Mr. Wang I've been in rehearsals. Right, right, right. I've been reading in. So uh, he didn't think it was such a good idea afterwards because he got too many funny lines. <laughs> um, but the, the bottom line of it was that um, we... We've been asked to do a TV series of Mr. Wang's detective agency, so oh. maybe that's a possibility. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Brendan, thank you so much for My your pleasure. time. Jennifer, thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much.